<coughs> then the Imam al Barbahari he mentions a further point. He said, وَلَا يَحِلُّ قِتَالُ السُّلْطَانِ وَلَا الْخُرُوجُ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْجَارِ وَذَلِكَ لِقَوْلِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِأَبِي ذَرِّنِ الْغِفَارِ إِسْبِرْ وَإِنْ كَانَ عَبْدًا حَبَشِيًّا وَلِقَوْلِهِ لِلْأَنصَارِ إِسْبِرُوا حَتَّى تَلْقَوْنِي عَلَى الْحَوْضِ وَلَيْسَ مِنَ السُّنَّةِ قِتَالُ السُّلْطَانِ فَإِنَّ فِيهِ فَسَادَ الدُّنْيَا وَالدِّينِ He said and it is not permissible to fight the ruler nor to rebel against him even if he oppresses and that is because of the saying of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Abu Dhar al-Ghifari have patience even if he is an Abyssinian slave and his saying to the Ansar have patience until you meet me at the reservoir, the Hawd. It is not from the Sunnah, the Imam continued, it is not from the Sunnah to fight against the ruler, for it brings about corruption of the worldly life and of the religion. Sheikh Bawazan, he said in explanation, it is not permissible for anyone to fight against the Sultan, to fight against the ruler, by rebelling against him using weapons. Because this results in, ma in major evils. He's saying, وَلَا يَحِلُّ قِتَابُ السُّلْطَانِ وَلَا الْخُرُوجُ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْجَارِ And it is not permissible to fight against the ruler nor to rebel against him even if he is oppressive. Shaykh Razan said cleaning it is forbidden, it is haram, forbidden to fight against the ruler meaning to fight against the ruler as is, as is done by the Khawarij وَإِنْ جَارْ Even if he commits oppression. Shaykh Razan said, meaning, even if some tyranny or oppression occurs from him, then the person should have sabr, he should have patience upon that. Because having patience upon that, even though it has harm within it, even though he's going to suffer some oppression, and he suffers some harm in, in, in having patience, she said, but having patience upon that, even though it has harm within it, then this is lighter than the harm which results from rebelling against him. It's less serious, lighter, less of a problem than the harm that results from rebelling against him. So the harm which comes about along with having patience upon obedience to the oppressive ruler this is lighter, less serious than the harm which comes about through rebelling against him. And there is no doubt that from the principles that are confirmed in Islam is irtikabu akhaf iddararain lidafi a'lahuma from these principles confirmed in Islam is taking on board the lesser of two harms to repel the greater one. Taking on the lesser of two, you have to go take one or two harms, one or two harms is going to happen, you have to do one or the other, taking on the lesser one to repel the greater one. Shaykh Razan said, and the Prophet wasallam said to the Ansar, إِنَّكُمْ سَتَرَوْنَ بَعْدِي أَثَرَةً فَاسْبِرُوا حَتَّى تَلْقَوْنِي عَلَى الْحَوْضِ Quoting the full wording of the hadith quoted by the author here. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I'm quoting the fuller wording, that you will indeed see undue preference after me. So have patience until you meet me at the Hawd, at the great reservoir. 
in a footnote they mention this indeed the same narration as before reported by the, the same narration brought by the author in the main text reported by al-Bukhari in his Sahih it should be as hadith number 3792 and reported by Muslim in his Sahih and it should be hadith 1845 not 54, it should be 45 from a hadith of Usaid ibn al-Hudayr radiallahu anhu <coughs> he said you will indeed see after me athara undue preference so have patience until you meet me at the Hawl, at the great reservoir Sheikh Fawzan said he enjoined them with sabr with having patience even though they were going to experience athara undue preference against them and it is, and Shemuel Fawzan explained this word, he said, and it is, preferring other people with wealth and excluding them. So he enjoined them with having patience. Because of what lies in this, from repelling the greater of two evils. And he said, he's saying, وَذَلِكَ لِقَوْلِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ لِأَبِي دَرٍ مِنَ الْغِفَارِ اثبر وإن كان عبدا حبشيا and that is because the saying of, that is because of the saying of Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم to Abu Dhar al-Ghifari have patience even if he be an Abyssinian slave Sheikh Bozan said meaning do not hold the ruler in contempt do not belittle do not hold the ruler in contempt even if his appearance is not pleasing as rather said even if his appearance is not beautiful even if he is black in colour even if he does not have Arabian lineage because what is counted is his position which is the Khilafah the Khalifa or Al-Imara the major leadership and what is counted is not his own person so he is to be obeyed as long as he is Muslim as long as he is a Muslim and his appearance, his bodily appearance is not to be looked to his bodily appearance which perhaps does not please the one who, who looks because of his demand or because of his deformity or ugliness or because of his shabby appearance or because of a defect in his body Mujadda al-Atraf Shaykh Fawzan quotes the hadith that came last week one of the wordings of the same the hadith of Abu Dhar that even if he is a slave with severed limbs whose limbs are cut off this being part of the same hadith and the narration of the, main, the hadith put in the, in the, by the author in the main text hadith of Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu reported by al-Bukhari as hadith 3792 and Muslim as hadith 1845 and this being one particular wording of that that preceded short one or just one of the wordings of that hadith the hadith the wording reported by Muslim as hadith 1837 or rather as hadith from Abu Dhar as hadith 648 rather reported by Muslim as hadith 600 then Shaykh Fawzan said Hafizullah Mujadda al-Atraf even if his, he has his limbs cut off he said all of this does not justify rebelling against him defect, bodily defects he doesn't look pleasing but shabby appearance so on and so forth Shaykh said all of this does not justify rebelling against him even if he is a sick person or he has weak health as long as the pledge of obedience was established for him then he should have patience with him and he is to be heard and obeyed even if he has these characteristics he's saying وَلَيْسَ مِنَ السُنَّةِ قِتَالُ السُّلْطَانِ and it 
fighting against the Sultan, the ruler, is not from the Sunnah. <coughs> Shaykh Fawzan said, it is not from the Sunnah established from the Prophet ﷺ to fight against the ruler. Not in a single hadith. Neither a weak one, nor a hasan one, nor an authentic one. Not in the sunnah at all. There is not in the sunnah any hadith which proves fighting against the Muslim ruler. Even if he is sinful, even if he is an oppressor, even if he is a, even if he is a tyrant, and even if he shows undue preference with wealth, then it is still not permissible to rebel against him. Rather, the ahadith, all of them, prove having patience with that, and the forbiddance of rebelling against him. Then Shaykh al Fawzan makes an important point and says, and this does not mean that the ruler should not be advised, shouldn't receive nasiha, sincere advice. Rather, he should be advised in secret, privately, between the person, between him and the one who is advising. So it is obligatory upon the person who has some sincere advice to take it to the ruler. Just as he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Ad-deen al-nasiha, qulna liman, qal lillahi, wa li kitabihi, wa li rasulihi, wa li a'immati al-muslimin, wa a'immatihim. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the religion is sincerity. So we said, to whom? So he said, to Allah, and to his book and to his messenger and to the rulers of the Muslims and to their common folk hadith, as I mentioned before, another famous hadith reported by Muslim in the Sahih as hadith number 55 from a hadith of Tamim al-Dari radiallahu anhu so the Shaykh, Shaykh Fawzan said so that does not mean that he has not to be advised in the fact we don't rebel against him we have patience with him the Shaykh said that does not mean that he is not to be advised and that he is to be abandoned, left alone. Rather, things must be made clear to him and he should be advised and this is his right upon the scholars and upon his subjects and upon those whom he consults and upon the people of sound opinion that they give him sincere advice. Just a small point here with regard to uh, a, a note from Sheikh Suhaimi in his explanation, Sheikh Salih al Suhaimi, Hafidullah, and he said with regard to the word Sultan, because the word Sultan occurs here, literally the word obviously Sultan, the Sultan, the one, one in authority. <coughs> then Sheikh Suhaimi, he made a point here, he said he's saying Sultan, he used this word here to make it general. And the one who has sultana, the one who has authority, make it a general word. He said, to make it general, he used the word sultan to make it general. Whether the person is a khalifa, khalif, or a malik, a king, or a sultan, or a ra'is, a head or president or something. Whatever he is, as long as he establishes the legislation of Allah, the perfect and most high, whatever his title is, whether he is called a king, or Sultan, Sultan, or an Amir, Chief, Head, or an Imam. Whatever, then the witness here is that it is forbidden to rebel against him. Back to the explanation of Shaykh Fawzan, he said, bringing on the next point, on the next section of this, this point here, وَلَيْسَ مِنَ السُنَّةِ بِتَالُ السُّلْطَانِ The repetition of the same. He said, and it is not from the Sunnah to fight against the Sultan, the ruler. Shaykh Fawzan said, meaning, there is no proof for it. Nothing sahih, nothing authentic, and nothing da'if, nothing weak, to show that it is legislated to fight against the Muslim ruler. 
rather there is in it in the sunnah and in the Quran also the command to obey him Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul wa ulil amri minkum Surah Al-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 59 with the explanation O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those in authority from amongst you Shaykh Razan says, so look at his saying, minkum with the meaning from amongst you Shaykh Razan said, meaning as long as he is a Muslim minkum, from amongst you, from amongst the Muslims so Shaykh said, meaning as long as he is a Muslim then it is obligatory to obey him and he said, finishing his saying, فَإِنَّ فِيهِ فَسَادَ الدُّنْيَا وَالدِّينَ for indeed in rebelling against him, the ruler in it lies corruption of the worldly life and of the religion Shaykh Razan said in fighting against the ruler or rather he said fighting against the ruler brings about corruption of the worldly life such that authority is lost authority, kingship, authority is lost and fawda, anarchy or chaos becomes widespread and then the enemy and the enemies overcome and the religion becomes lost and he explains that I mean, what, what I mean, Islam disappears what does he mean by the religion becomes lost in the religion of the people how? he said <coughs> since there is no one to establish the prescribed punishments the hudud and no one who can carry out the pisas the retaliatory punishments and there is no one who can enforce the legislated rulings and give back the rights to those who deserve them and who can enforce the judicial rulings there's no one who can do any of this no, can, no one can enforce any of this in this situation he said and thus the religion is corrupted and there is chaos and corruption and the hand of the thief cannot be chopped so therefore people's wealth is lost and the highway robbers do not have their limbs amputated and therefore the roads become disused because who can establish all of this he is the person in authority the one in charge of the affairs this is from the function this is from the function of the one in authority and no one will be able even if all the people gather no one will be able to establish these affairs rather chaos and anarchy will result that's where Sheikh Razan ends explanation of that point and the next point that follows is the responsibility of fighting against Abu just before finishing had one point from the explanation of Sheikh Ahmad al Najri, Rahimahullah, then he said, I say, the aqeedah, the creed and belief of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that fighting against the ruler is not permissible, and likewise rebelling against him. It is not permissible because of the prohibition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his warning against rebelling against him and the prohibition of challenging him challenging the ruler which occurs in the hadith of Ubad ibn al-Samit with the wording and that we will not we will not challenge those in authority with regard to the affair Hadith, as Sheikh said in the footnote, Hadith already preceded me. It was part of the pledge which the companions gave to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa that they would not challenge those in authority of the affair. Sheikh Ahmad continued, so challenging those in authority of the affair is not permissible. And that comes about by provoking and rabble rousing the common masses to rebel against them 
all of this is not permissible and from that is criticizing them, criticizing the rulers from the members for this will only enrage the hearts of those in authority and cause estrangement between those in authority and the common masses cause separation and estrangement between them and cause them to have no trust in each other and the Prophet ﷺ said the best of your rulers are those whom you love and who love you and, who sup- and whom or who you supplicate for them and they supplicate for you and the worst of your rulers are those whom you hate and who hate you and they well, you abuse them and they abuse you so they said we said O Messenger of Allah shall we not challenge them shall we not go against them with regard to that so he said no not as long as they establish the prayer amongst you not as long as they establish the prayer indeed whoever has someone in authority over him and he sees him committing something from disobedience to Allah then let him dislike, let him hate that which he commits from disobedience to Allah but let him not remove his hand from obedience a hadith being reported by Muslim as a hadith of Alfred bin Malik and the Shaykh said and the proofs are present in this regard from the book and there are many and the speech of the Salaf there is a great deal of that and Allah is the one who grants success